Hi, I'm Andrew Sonia, and today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite tools for painting in Photoshop. I'm talking about clipping masks. And if you already know what they are, stick around, because later in the video I'll show you some cool ways of using them that you might not know about. Clipping masks let you paint only inside the pixels of another layer, even if you draw outside of it. Here you can see I have an arm silhouette, and now when I use a clipping mask, when I paint it's constrained inside. If I unclip the layer, you can see what I actually painted. To create a clipping mask, hold down ALT, then click between two layers. After clipping a layer, you just paint! The great thing about this is you can use soft brushes and texture brushes to paint the form while you keep the main shape nice and clean. You can clip as many additional layers to this first layer as you want. To unclip, you hold ALT and click between again. If you're bad at keeping inside the lines with coloring books, then this is the tool for you. I mean, just take a look at what I actually painted here. Here I felt I painted at too low contrast, so I use a levels adjustment layer to fix this. Now I want to add a cool tattoo, so I clip a new layer and paint the design I want. There's no way to do nested clipping masks, so since the tattoo is already clipped inside the arm shape, I can't then clip layers to the tattoo to paint inside of it. Instead, they all clip to the base layer. But there's a workaround. Click the lock layer transparency button, and now paint inside the tattoo to add the shading. I like working like this where layers are separate, so I can later change it or add other layers with different tattoo designs. And when my art director takes issue with my taste in 90s tribal tattoos, uh, and other tattoos, then at least I still have the plain arm underneath. One important thing is to make sure the first layer you're using as a silhouette is painted opaquely. Here I've painted a character, but the brushstrokes are a bit transparent, and you can see the wall through him. Look what happens to these colors when I create a clipping mask. They don't show up properly, and the transparency makes it look weird and patchy, a bit like the way my beard grows. But say I really love this silhouette and want to use it. What I can do is just duplicate the layer a whole bunch of times until it's opaque, and then merge them. I still see some transparency which will cause problems, so let's do that again. Now when I clip these colors to the silhouette, you can see it goes inside normally. Using clipping masks lets you keep very clean, nice silhouettes and paint complexity within them. I use them on quick sketches like these. Especially for anything mechanical, it's really ideal and the only way to work. I also use it on finished concept designs like the work I did for Phoenix Rising. And I use it on detailed illustrations. While it works for any type of painting, this technique works particularly well when starting with line drawings, since it will let you get a clear and precise silhouette. You might want to break this into a few layers based on overlaps, and then use clipping masks on each part. For example, I put the arm and far ear on a different layer from the main body, and use a third layer for the eyes and teeth. Now I'll show an interesting workflow of using multiple layers as clipping masks. If you're as lazy as I am, then you'll appreciate how much time this workflow will save. As you can see, we start by first painting the local colors inside as a base. Now I'll use some middle value blue color to paint where the shadows might go. So you can use any color you want. Look what happens when I paint on a normal layer. It just puts the color I painted on top. If I switch the layer mode to multiply, it suddenly affects the colors underneath and looks like shadows. Wow, this giant human wolf arm could be as real as you or me! Here I've gone ahead and set stuff up. Multiply layers for shadows can be a really quick way to add lighting and try out different options for light direction. Layer blending modes work great with clipping masks. I have a new layer for a rim light. If I wasn't using clipping masks, this layer would have been really tedious to paint. Because it's separate, I can easily adjust it by reducing its opacity or hitting Ctrl U to change the color. Now, let's say we want to paint a pretty girl in a dress. Because the shadows on the multiply layer affect each local color underneath, it doesn't matter how complex a pattern you have. I'll turn on and off some of the layers so you can see what they do. Okay, let's try with a new pattern. Just paste it in and voila! You'd think that since it's a flat pattern and not wrapping the form of the dress that it would look wrong, but it's surprisingly forgiving because the shadows show the form. If something really is not looking right, you can always warp the pattern to wrap the form a bit, but it's not really needed here in my opinion. 
Alternatively, you can paint a pattern manually under the shadows. That was easy. Alright, let's try pasting a photo into a silhouette. He's made out of meat! Although I suppose technically we're all made out of meat. Huh. Anyways, you can find some interesting shapes and designs like this. It works really well with photos that are very different from characters, like this architecture. Moving it around lets me see all sorts of unexpected shapes and colors that I might want to use in a design and I wouldn't be able to think up on my own. How about a forest? Or a motorcycle? I see a cool sci-fi mask with some sort of a breathing tube coming out of it. How about scales from a moth's wing? You can stretch it and change its color too. The only limitation is your creativity. And your skills with Google Images and Pinterest, I guess. I like to use clipping masks for each object in a scene, using multiple in the same painting. For this painting, I had separate layers and clipping masks to paint the branches, leaves, and each acorn. Don't be fooled into thinking it only works with clean, smooth silhouettes. It works really well with textured bases too. Like if I want to add a tree to this landscape, I can choose a really messy textural brush to give the impression of lots of tiny leaves. And once I have the silhouette, I can easily paint it in. But let's say you don't have time to paint the tree. The deadline is right now! You can even cut out a shape from a photo. Paste it into your painting, place it where you want, and then paint inside of that. Now it matches the proper lighting and is fully integrated with the painted style, but still maintains the specific shapes of this species of tree. I prefer painting stuff manually, but this can be a really useful trick if you're short on time. I hope you enjoyed the video today and learned something new. If you use clipping masks, or have a cool way of using them that I didn't cover, let me know in the comments below. I'll be making more videos, so don't forget to subscribe as well for more content. Thanks, and until next time. I hope you enjoyed the video today. <laughs> I always forget now. Okay.